to see you guys. We have Nicole Rippin joining us this morning too. You guys have met her before. She is our uh, lead language pastor over our different languages that we have offered, offered, offered at Bethel. Uh, And she's joining us because I don't know if you know, but it's Mission Sunday. 
this week and next. And so kind of the theme over these next two weeks is uh, going over missions, highlighting some of uh, what our missionaries are doing around the world. It's so amazing to see. And then we have an amazing day today. We got uh, Pastor Bill's going to be bringing the word. And then for worship, we have Paul and Hannah McClure and also guest Aiden King from Hillsong is joining us this morning. So it's going to be a really powerful time, but super excited. And our missions pastors, John and Cindy, yes. are bringing the word too. So there's two oh, yes. words. Two words. Two words. So get ready. If you're hungry, Two words, one service. It's, <laughs> it's going to be powerful. Uh, we have just wrapped up Randy Clark Week. How many of you joined us for Randy Clark Week? Go ahead and put in the or chat. Or Healing School and Impartation is what the it's called, the not Randy Clark title. Week. But Randy Clark does speak He does at a the lot. Event. And we here call it Randy Clark Week <laughs> internally. Um, but if you joined for that... Uh, put it in the chat. We'd love to hear if what God did in your life, any testimonies from this past week, uh, the evening services all on YouTube, um, and then a number of you joined us at Bethel TV throughout the whole week. And so we'd love to hear. We already had some just awesome stories of how God yeah. moved online. I know in the last service we had at least 70 people that were healed, just you guys, our online community. And so there was somebody that had swelling in their face for a year. Yeah. That went away, somebody that had ear pain for since 2019, somebody had arthritis, they got healed. Uh, we had a number of uh, rotator cuffs, calm rotator cuffs, and um, just so many in, like, necks got healed, somebody, lumps disappeared, a hernia disappeared on that uh, Friday night, just, Death I mean, ears opening up. yeah, we could just keep talking forever. On and on. it was amazing. Yeah, and then we also had so many uh, people had metal dissolve in their body or leave their body or had movement or pain leave M movement return pain leave <laughs> we're getting it <laughs> we are doing it this morning <laughs> we're gonna drink some more coffee before we end this service but um so good to see many of you allison is saying hi steve ruth and nicole uh Cass said my mic went out and my mic isn't working so let's not me talk let's pass over to nicole <laughs> I hope mine is working. I'm so glad to see you all. I saw somebody from Wiesbaden, which is so amazing to see people from home, actually. Um, yeah, I was so impressed from Randy Clark because so many people were here just listening to the worship. And I just want to see that today happening as well, that you come full of expectancy. We had 40 people being healed online, I think, before even anybody was being prayed for. So just raise your awareness of, like, God is with you. He's healing online. And just receive that during worship, I prophesy that we will see the first healings online just through the worship. Come on. And I'm so glad to be here today for Mission Sunday. It's always one of my favorite events of the year. Um, we are so happy that we get to stream and uh, to translate the services into five different languages. So if you, have, if you are from a different nation and you are not so fluent in English, just check us out on YouTube. We would love to see you there. Um, we have German, Russian, Chinese, Italian, Brazilian, and Spanish. So we would be very happy to see wow. you guys. Well, yeah, we do have an amazing, amazing translations team. And we have, uh, we also just received a ton of sort of prophetic words about just reaching the nations. And the idea, since it's missions weeks, two weeks, uh, it was to have Nicole. And then we're also going to be bringing on her team. And they're going to be praying in their language over us and ministering to us over the next two weeks, which is going to be really fun for us. So. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, we do have a couple of testimonies, and then I would love to have Nicole uh, pray. There's somebody joining us from India, saying the gospel is going out in India. Casey, uh, Mission Sunday, attending Harvest School. Jonas from Denmark, we're so glad that you're joining us. Uh, Shawnia, asking for prayer for healing as well. So we shared some testimonies this morning, whether you heard the ones I shared or not, some people put in the chat. But I would love for, um, I believe what God has started, he's going to continue. Every time we have the healing school of impartation and the, <laughs> what he said, it's a long school. We do work we on do. here. We do know our... Healing best. school. Every time we have, we have this event, You're doing great. we get such an upgrade. And I'm just believing God is going to heal people just like Nicole said this morning. And so just get your hands out ready to receive. We're going to have Nicole pray. I believe there's going to be a touch from heaven for so many and also that pray so many are going to get healed in German. All right. Yes. I will. <laughs> get ready. Get ready. 
Okay, Jesus, ich danke dir, dass du hier bist. Ich danke dir, dass du online mindestens genauso stark wirkst, wie du hier im Raum wirkst, Jesus. Und ich bete, dass du einfach den Glauben gerade jetzt in jedem Raum erhöhst, dass, die, dass einfach das Bewusstsein für deine Gegenwart total geschärft ist. Jesus, ich danke dir jetzt schon für all die Wunder, die du tun wirst online. Ich danke dir, dass Menschen ihre Heilung erfahren, ob es geistlich ist, ob es seelisch ist, ob es körperlich ist. Jesus, danke, dass dein Heiliger Geist dort wirkt, ganz stark. Danke, dass Menschen beginnen. Begegnungen haben werden, die sie noch nie gehabt haben in ihrem Leben. Danke, dass jemand, der in der Küche steht und arbeitet, plötzlich von deinem Geist überwältigt wird und gar nicht mehr weitermachen kann, einfach weil deine Gegenwart den Raum füllt. Und so segne ich jeden Einzelnen, der uns zusieht, Jesus, und ich danke dir, dass du mit ihnen bist, ganz spürbar in, ihren, in ihrem Alltag, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I felt the Lord. If you understood or not, Jesus is moving. I did want to say... Yeah, here, see, you've got some people, some, some love for our German-speaking people. We're so thankful that you're a part of our community. Amanda did ask for prayer for Abigail, her one-year-old who's battling with RSV. And so right now we speak over you, baby Abigail, and we say be healed in the name of Jesus. Lungs open up, healing to your body in Jesus' name. Amanda, we know you're part of our family here. We are standing with you and believing with you. Um, family, thanks for joining us. Nicole. Thanks for being with us and thanks for translating all of our services and materials to reach the nations. We're so thankful that you do that. Uh, please enjoy the service. We're believing God's going to touch you, uh, heal you, restore you, bring encounters and a lot of good stuff. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, and I don't know what else. To we'll see you, guys we'll see you at the end. <laughs> Bless you guys. Bye. We just love your nearness. Friend above. All others, friend above all others. Right here, right now. All sufficiency. You are all we need. the good
gentleman from around the world that's joined us. So go ahead and stand. We're going to start service in just about 30 or 40 seconds. As always, feel free to worship up front. If you'd like to come up front to worship, you're more than welcome. All right. That's terrific. Online family. We're glad you're with us as well. Shh. Okay, that's enough Christian love. Well done. All right. Just, just small doses, small intense doses. So we have a fabulous day today. The Lord's given us a gorgeous sunny day here. If you're not with us in Reading, it's been terrific right in the middle of some storms. It's beautiful. And then we've had, we had our beautiful fast. We've commissioned our, you know, our leadership and pastoral team. We had Randy Clark for three or four days here just this week. And then today is Missions Sunday. And it's uh, Mission Sundays. It's this Sunday and next. And so it's going to be a terrific day. If you haven't been to the East-West Fellowship Room to kind of see the unreached, unreached people groups, John and Cindy will tell you more about that. Then feel, head over there after service as well. And then we have a guest worship leader with us. Aiden King is with us from uh, Hillsong. Glad you're here. Blessed, got a chance to hear his ministry this morning. Let's turn our attention to the Lord, and then we're going to have a video, and then we'll move right into worship. But today is about the missions. It's about the nations. So let's, let's pray into that. Heavenly Father, you love the lost. You are calling them home to yourself. You love the nations. You love just the ethnicity of the earth. You, you love uh, the, the unity and the, the difference as well. And so... We pray, would you clothe us with power? Would you clothe us with joy? Both those in this room and outside this room, that our affection for you, our affection for those who don't know you, our affection for one another would move us to ministry. It would be like scripture says, the love of Christ is compelling me. That we would be moved from hearing your heart for people today. We ask for an anointing on this entire day in worship, in ministry, in ministering one to another, all for the sake of the King. And the people of God said together, Amen. Amen. All right, let's enjoy this video, then we'll move into worship. Lift up your voice. Let sounds of faith fill the air. Every word a seed of prayer sown into the ground. For the unreached ones and prodigal sons, the lost longing for the one who makes all things new. Lift up your voice. For he rides on your praise and your prayers. He rests on every wave. All of heaven awaits the adoption of every son and daughter. Lift up your voice. Pray that the few become the plenty of harvest hands. This is the call. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. For every nation under the sun, far and wide, every people, tribe, and tongue, like the dawn, your Savior comes. Lift up your voice.
Yeah.
my words fall short, sing that again. Oh, when my words fall short and I have nothing more, let my whole life sing how I love, I love you. I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you. I love you. Sing it, I'm okay. And I will give you all my worship. And I will give you all my praise. You alone, I long to worship. Yes, you alone. Come on, raise your hands and sing again straight to his heart. Yes, I will give.
Wow. Wow. I, I don't know what's going on out there, but it's pretty thick right up here. This morning, we've dedicated this morning to talking about 7,000 people groups who have been unreached for Christ. And um, we're talking about an early morning prayer this morning, we were talking about that the Lord's literally going to call people. I, I remember a testimony many years ago uh, of, a t of a missionary to, I forget, a dark place in Africa. I don't remember where it was. But he said, when I was eight years old, a missionary came and shared about Africa. And he said, at eight, I said, send me Lord. And he was a, a missionary in Africa. And I just think about what God's doing right now, that he's opening up doors, he's changing an era. He's anointing, opening a door to a whole new era. And this morning, I was just thinking about this verse. You know, uh, Solomon wasn't as uh, connected to God in his last days. So he said some really good things and not so good things in Ecclesiastes. And one of the most profound things he said in Ecclesiastes is this verse, God has put eternity in our hearts, without which no one can know the works God does from the beginning to the end. And I, I, I just, uh, Paul wrote it this way. He's in Colossians, he said, set your heart on the things above where Christ is, not on the things below. And you come into a time of worship like this and it just feels like eternity is just pressing in on us. And things become clearer when you keep eternity in mind. Solomon said, you don't even know the works God does unless you have eternity in your heart. Now, I wrote this, what we do and the choices we make over the next 90-ish years, finite years, determine the next billion years of our eternity. Now, I believe this is a holy moment. I'd like everyone to stand. And, uh, sorry, if you're watching us, if you're on our on campus, online campus. We just, you can just stand too if you're in your car, just roll down the sunroof and stand up. <laughs> and wanna just grab a hand. And what I want us to do is just, I want us just to pray right now that eternity would just break into our hearts right now. God, you know, there's so many crazy things going on in the world and so many choices that are in front of us. We probably are the most blessed generation maybe in the history of the world. That's opened up so many shiny things for us. And yet when the Lord puts eternity in our hearts, we're like, that's the way I'm supposed to go. That's what I'm supposed to do. This is who I am and this is where I'm called. And I want you just to pray for the person on your left and right. I'm gonna have you pray for yourself in a few minutes, we're gonna pray for, but I want you to pray for the person on your left and right, that God returning would just break in on them. Clarity would come to their hearts. Clarity would come to their minds. Just pray right now for your neighbor. Just pray for your neighbor as if it was your own son or your own daughter. Come on, eternity. Let eternity break in on our hearts. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, move in power. My brother and my sister, crash in. Let, cr let eternity crash in on us as we pray for each other. Let eternity crash in on us as we pray for each other. Shh. 
Now I want you to do this. I want you to put your hand on your heart. I'm going to pray for you first. Lord, I just thank you that this is, we're in the beginning of eternity. We're in the first hundred years of our own eternity. We're on the finite side of an infinite life with you. God, I pray that eternity would crash in on each of our hearts. That you would take crooked ways and make them straight, rough places and make them smooth. This morning when I woke up, I heard the word smooth sailing. Lord, I pray that you would smooth out the rough places. When John the Baptist preached that, he wasn't talking about roads, he was talking about hearts. Lord, may the rough places of our hearts be smoothed out the crooked places made straight. Thank you, Lord. Now, I just want you to pray this out loud. Say, Lord, Lord may you put eternity in my heart so I could understand the things you're doing in me and around me. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you just give it up for the band, please? Great job, guys. And before you sit down, would you just give someone a hug and let them know you love them? As people are finding their seats, if you have some seats next to you, if you want to raise your hand for those people, we have a very full house today. If you're joining with us online, thank you for doing that. We welcome you. If you are a holdover from the Randy Clark week that we had, welcome. Welcome to the wrong service. You didn't read your thing. No, I'm just kidding. Some of you got invited. I know. Uh, welcome. And then I know we have some people actually here that drove in from Sacramento, from Banning, had a pastor's conference, and I see a few of you here. So that's amazing. Uh, you didn't come to our event. You went to Banning's, but that's okay. We still love you, brother and sister in Christ. Okay. It's amazing. We have a couple of uh, verbal things that we want to just remind you of before we show you uh, the, the church news. One is that February 15th, we have a, an annual business meeting. So if you're a member here, we're trying to change the world and we need your vote to do that. So we want you to show up uh, to that, uh, to the business meeting that night. And then uh, tonight at five o'clock, at five o'clock, if uh, um, you want to be baptized, that's going to be at five, uh, in, meet in the dining room, wear dark clothes. If you're unsure, put your clothes on, hop in the shower, show a friend and they'll tell you, they'll tell you whether or not that's good for tonight. Um, our ushers are actually, I forgot something, are available for you. If you're a visitor here with us, uh, we want to welcome you. We love you. Thank you for being with us as we worship the Lord together. But if you'd raise your hand for us, if you're a visitor, our ushers actually have a visitor card for you to fill out. And then after today's service, you can go to the South Lobby, get more information. Yes, clap for our visitors. Thank you so much for being here and for coming. It's awesome. They're going to hand out those cards as the rest of us go ahead and watch the church news. Hey Bethel family, so glad you're in church today. I'm Dan Fairley, lead pastor here. I'm Christy Tillman, I'm the community life pastor. And this is the church news. <laughs> well Christy, if only we had a volunteer for this next announcement. That would be great. 
Hey, I can volunteer. Uh. The good is it's Haney who pastors our volunteers here at Bethel Church. Thanks. Hey, if you guys want to make big church feel like a small church, this is your chance. We would love you to join our greeter teams, our usher teams, our parking teams. Have you seen Sam in the parking lot? He's always there. <laughs> we need some people joining Sam. If you would like to join our teams on Sunday morning, it would be so wonderful for you to come this Wednesday night in the hospitality suite at 6.30 p.m. Um, or if you already know what you're doing or want to do, fill in a form at Bethel.com forward slash surf. Well, as most of you know, our prophetic conference has been essential for the life of our church for over a decade. And the next one's coming up in just under a month. Chris Vallotton, Ben Armstrong, Katya, and Julian Adams will be speaking and ministering there. So you're going to want to be a part. Get online and get your ticket and just grow in your capacity to hear the voice of the Lord for yourself and for other people. This summer, we are having our Bethel Music Worship School for worship leaders, songwriters, musicians, and creatives who want to grow in heart and skill as they serve the body of Christ. To save your seat now and for more information, go to Bethel.com forward slash events. If only we had a volunteer for this event. Jen. Jen? Jen Johnson, are you here? No. Darn. You should still come. It'd be awesome. So that's all for this week's church news. If you missed any of these announcements, be sure to find them at Bethel.com Church News. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time. Well, good morning. I'm Havila, and I am so excited that you're here. We're going to continue our worship through giving. So will you stand with me today for a minute? We have a lot going on this service. Uh, I'm really excited and we don't wanna take any time from what God is, has been doing and will be doing. So we want to jump in and I wanna say this, you know, that God, what he, everything is his. I wanna remind us and that tithing and giving offerings are really a spiritual discipline. We give God our time, our talents and our treasures, all of which belong to him already, but those are what matter to him. So we're gonna read uh, uh, offering number two, reading number two. I'm not gonna put it on the screen. I really believe you guys should know this by now. So when we read it, I want you to look around and see who's not talking. No, I'm teasing, okay. I'm teasing, a little bit of motivation. All right, we're gonna read offering number two. Here we go, you guys ready? All right, as we receive today's offering, we are believing you for Heaven invade, invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, impartation, and divine manifestations, anointings, giftings, and calls, positions and promotions, provisions and resources to go to the nations, souls and more souls from every generation, saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Father, that as I join my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessing, and increase so I might have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, hold out your your offering in front of you, or if it's just like a, a sign, a symbol, if somebody has cash, don't grab it, but put it in your hand. And we're just gonna, we're gonna just like we worshiped and raised our hands to him, it's a sign of saying, God, this is yours. So take it. Lord, we thank you that all of it is yours. You have been nothing but generous to us. You've been nothing but abundant in our lives. We have been saved, set free, delivered, and we live in the joy of eternity. And so God, we, we are giving you this because this is a sign that everything belongs to you. And we know the safest place for our time, talents, and treasures is in your hands. And so we give it to you. And everybody said... Amen and amen. I want to now give it over to our incredible missions director and pastor, John and Cindy Taylor. Will you guys? Well, good morning. It's good to be with you. How's everyone doing? Wow. We want to welcome the our family that's in the overflow row, room, and we also want to welcome our church family online. It's, it's exciting. Today is the first of two uh, Sundays where we're really celebrating what God is doing around the world uh, and in our hearts. And so uh, we're just leaning into this celebration of missions. You, you might have noticed something a little different in here with these flags. We're going to tell you what these flags mean in a little bit. Uh, I just love that, that here at Bethel, 
missions is in our DNA. I mean, it's, it's really who we are. We've got such a rich legacy and heritage here. I, I love every time I drive up the hill here. Uh, for those of you who are joining us online, you may not have been able to be here, but the, the road going up our hill here is lined with the flags of nations. I just, I love that. I love that if, if I were to ask, I'm going to do it right now. Raise your hand if you were born in a different country. Look around. Look around, everybody. <laughs> I mean, we are an international community, a multicultural movement because of what God has been stirring here in Redding, California. We've been touching nations. Do you know that in our school of ministry this year, we have students from over 60 nations? And, and do you know that, that this message this morning is going to be translated by our team of translators into over seven languages? So the word of God is going to the uttermost, amen? And we're just excited with, with this chance to really highlight what he's doing and also lean in to what he wants to continue to do, amen? So there's a lot of things on our hearts we wanna share with you today, but the number one thing that we wanna do is give God the glory for what he's doing all over the world. He's doing beautiful things through our Bethel missionaries and beyond. Uh, you know, we have over 130 Bethel missionaries, more than 50 of whom are kids. I love my Bethel missions kids. So I actually want to take a minute here at the beginning of the service to introduce some of the Bethel missionaries who are here in this service. Would y'all just stand, please? Go ahead. Aaron and Anna and Emma, Stafford and Romania, Matt, and where did Elizabeth go? <laughs> yes. And Tracy is in here somewhere. Tracy Evans. Yes. We love y'all. We so appreciate each one of you and what you do. Emma, that includes you too. And we just bless you. Thanks for being with us today. Is it okay if I start with a testimony this morning? <laughs> so I wish I could tell a story from each one of our missionaries, but I had to choose one but I thought it would be awesome to start out our time together by hearing uh, from Joel and Lacey Hill who live in Thailand with their three boys. They actually minister all across Southeast Asia. And earlier last year, they were in an island nation. They were training indigenous church planters and it was an area with a lot of extremism and armed conflict. So Joel actually with some of his local contacts had an opportunity to get back behind rebel lines by helicopter into a remote tribe. This tribe actually still practices animal and human sacrifice. So Joel's visit had to be coordinated with the military. And when they arrived, Joel found out that the man who's both a tribal chief and witch doctor was deathly ill. So you can guess what's coming. So Joel thought, perfect, let's go to his house. So first thing they did was they went to this man's house and previously he had actually been very resistant to the gospel. There were a few in his village who had given their hearts to Jesus and he was strongly resistant. So Joel I prayed for him. He actually saw a black shadow come into his eyes. His eyes turned black. So then Joel just started to preach the gospel and share the story of how evil had come into the world. But Jesus Christ, the son of God, has offered his body as the single blood sacrifice for sin, for healing, for the destruction of evil. And this chief happily received Jesus. He, he also received a great deal of healing right on the spot and he's being discipled. <laughs> But Joel said that as he shared with him, as this man put his faith in Jesus, he just saw this light come into his eyes. Isn't that amazing? That's our God. As you entered in the sanctuary today, most of you should have received one of these annual mission reports. And if you didn't receive one of these, please stop by our missions tables out in Hebrews lobby and also in the South lobby. And for our online church family, 
Uh, we've got this up on our website, Bethel.com forward slash missions. You can actually download it. So uh, we want you to have a chance just to get a, a deeper sense of what God has been doing uh, through Bethel Missions and also what we're leaning into in the next year. So next Sunday, we're going to have our annual missions offering. And how many of you know to send people out like Joel and Lacey, it takes money. And we love with our Bethel missionaries being to help fund what they're doing. And so this offering is going to go towards our general missions fund. And what our general missions fund does is that allows us collectively as a church to help fund our Bethel missionaries. So every month we put checks in the mail to our Bethel missionaries. Actually, it's ACH transfer in most cases. (laughs) But uh, this is a way that collectively we get to do that together. Does that make sense? Uh, If you are new here to Bethel or perhaps don't understand all the details of how we fund missions, there are other ways as well. The details are in this report, and we'd encourage you just to take a look at that. Um, But next week, we're going to be having this special offering. So we just ask you to, this week, be seeking the Lord. What would he have you give in to this next year as far as missions? Now, in addition to funding our Bethel family of missionaries, Uh, the general fund also allows us to give to special needs and special projects. So, you know, sometimes our missionaries will come to us and say, we have a great need. In fact, just this morning, I got a text from our our base leaders of the Iris base in in Nepal. And they said, we have an opportunity to buy half an acre of land. Um, Is that something that perhaps you could help us with? And, And this general fund is like a war chest where we can say, yes, we'll do that. And so in the report, there's details of where some of those things went this last year and also what we're leaning into this next year. Another really cool thing, this last year we got to translate the chosen into the language of a very oppressed and unreached people group. And this next year we'd like to do that in a few more languages. So that's where the the general fund goes. And and keep in mind uh, this week just to lay that before the Lord. And we're excited to see how God's going to provide in this next year. Where we'd really like to spend the bulk of our time this morning focusing, though, is on the global frontiers of missions. And we have a really special presentation that we'd like to share with you today. Please direct your attention to our screens. Every day, we have opportunities to hear about Jesus. But imagine a world where you don't. Even today, all around the world, there are people who have yet to hear the name of Jesus, and they have no one to tell them. These tribes have little or no community of believing Christians, and any indigenous believers that may be there do not have the numbers, resources, or ability to share about Jesus to their people without outside assistance. And it's not just a few. There are over 7,000 unreached people groups which add up to a total of over 3.4 billion souls. For perspective, imagine if these unreached people were standing hand in hand. The length of their line would stretch around the world 85 times. We're being stirred to join the Father in His pursuit. God is revealing Himself and inviting us into this adventure with him. We're hearing stories about the man in white coming in dreams, miracle healings, and whole communities giving their hearts to the Lord. In John 16, verse 13, Jesus promises that the Holy Spirit will guide humanity into truth. The Holy Spirit is the great revealer of Christ. And as his sons and daughters, we get to join in with Christ's intercessory prayers for his people to know him in full truth. We get to join with heaven's heart for the unreached people of the world. Rather than be daunted by the task ahead, we get to steward a joyful confidence that God's dream for the reconciliation of his children is a dream already in motion. Maybe today the Lord is stirring in your family a fresh burden to pray for the unreached Maybe he's asking you to take a tangible stand and give financial support to the harvesters in the land. Maybe he's provoking upon your heart a call to go to the field. Whatever he's whispering, 
We are a people who will give our yes in response to him. Jesus will receive his full inheritance and all of heaven awaits the adoption of his unreached sons and daughters. Come on, sign me up. <laughs> Raise your hand if you wanna sign up. <laughs> wow, isn't that a powerful visual? That there's that many of his unreached sons and daughters out there. They're out there and they're, they're not unreached because they've rejected the gospel. They're unreached because they've never heard the gospel. They've never gone. No one's ever gone to tell them. Well, we'd love just to share a little bit about our story with you. Is that okay? Of how God intersected our lives with unreached people groups. You know, after college, God brought Cindy in my life, and I'm sure glad he did. And he, he put us in the great land of Alaska. And was just loving Alaska. God gave us a, a log cabin up on a mountainside that overlooked the ocean and the Kenai Peninsula. And... and I was climbing the corporate ladder, doing really well with a large company and fishing a lot. <laughs> and then God began to stir in me. And God began to say, the American dream isn't all that I have for you. I want you to get more connected with my dream, with my heart. And Cindy and I, we were going through a study in the book of John and we were in John 15, I just love that, love that chapter. In verse 16, one morning, the study was taking us through that. And there were these words, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you should go, that you should bear fruit, that your fruit would remain, and that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he would do for you. And as we encountered the Lord through that verse that morning, that go of the gospel just leapt off the pages. We had, we had read that story a hundred times, or that passage a hundred times, but that morning the Lord used it to speak to our hearts. I came down to tell Cindy, who was in her secret place with the Lord, and I said, God's speaking, and she said, he's been speaking to me out of that verse too. And we knew that he was telling us to go. But, but Lord, there's a big world, you know? <laughs> Where do we go? And so we begin to lean into that. Lord, where would you have us go? And, and that's when we begin to really from Genesis to Revelation, we were doing a, a Bible read through together. And God began to just highlight all through scripture, his heart for all peoples, all nations, you know, from, from Genesis to the Psalms, to the prophets, to the gospels, to Revelation, you know, where we see the climax of history in heaven, every nation, every tribe, every people group. And and we began to just say, God, I, I think this is what you're saying. Matthew 28, one of the most well-known Great Commission passages, Jesus says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. How many does all mean? <laughs> it means all. And we also learned that that word nations, it, it doesn't mean countries like we often think of. You know, more or less, there's about 200 countries on planet earth today but it actually is the word ethnos. It means ethnic groups. It means people groups. These are people that share a common culture and language and a history. So when God says, go and make disciples of all nations, he's really saying every people group on the earth. And as we just saw, there's, there's over 17,000 of these people groups representing the, the world population of 8 billion souls. And 7,000, we learned that 7,000 of these groups didn't have a gospel witness. They were unreached. We learned that, that what this means is that unless something changes for these unreached peoples, they'll be born, they'll live their whole lives, and they'll die without ever hearing the gospel. Many of them will never even hear the name of Jesus. So then we begin to say, God, where are these people? And we begin to look at maps. Can we just uh, pull out that Google Earth map? for a moment here, I'd like to take you on a journey. Anyone recognize, you recognize that building? That's where we're sitting right now. We're, we're at College View right now. Now let's, let's pull out a little bit here. We're gonna beam out here 
start to look at Shasta County, you'll see the lake come into view there. Now, slow down, let's just pause right there. We're looking now over California. And what's emerged here is some red dots. Now, these red dots, each of them represents an unreached people group. And if, if we go in and click on one of those, you can play it a little bit longer. We can see which group it is. You might say, I didn't know we had unreached people groups in America. We do. They're mostly ethnic communities that have migrated here. So, for example, we've got the Tajiks in, Af uh, the, Tajiks in the Bay Area. We've also got the largest population of Afghans outside of Afghanistan living in the Bay Area. The last two years, we've sent student teams in our spring missions to go and minister uh, to unreached peoples that are right in our midst. But for the most part in North America, we don't have a lot of unreached peoples. Let's go ahead and back out and take a little bigger snapshot. We've got to start moving across the world until we get to areas where we've got high concentrations. You see, we've got some tribals in South America. In Africa, we've got a lot. In the Middle East. But the greatest concentration is in Central, Southern, and Southeast Asia. We're going to beam into the Himalayan nation of Bhutan. And each one of these dots, again, is a different people group. This is the Drukpa people. 214,000, 0% evangelical believers. 0% Catholic believers as well. So let's go ahead and back out. Look at the big picture of this uh, geographic region where these people groups are concentrated. And let's go ahead to uh, the next slide, please. So this just shows us the whole world at a glance. And again, you'll see where each of these red dots are. That represents a people group. Now, I want you to also notice there's a lot of green dots, dark green, light green, and then there's some yellows and there's some oranges. And each of these are the various levels of being reached. So green is a, a people group that's been reached with the gospel. Now, that doesn't mean the group has all been saved. It just means in that people group, there are Bibles, there are churches, there are ministers, there are ministries, there's access to the gospel. For example, here in Reading, we've got 100 churches. You know, so Reading is reached, but that doesn't mean we're saying we shouldn't go to these places, right? Because God loves the world, <laughs> right? He loves the whole world. And, and actually, the Great Commission in Acts chapter 1 says, Go into all the world. I'm, I'm giving you power, but start in Jerusalem, right? Yeah. Then Judea and Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts of the earth. So, so we learned that this isn't a question of, you know, God loving unreached people more. It's not about, uh, we're, we're all equal in worth to the heart of God, right? But we don't all have equal access to hear the gospel, and so God began to just grip our hearts. Lord, use us to go somewhere where people haven't heard, where they can't hear unless someone goes. And, and through a long process, which I don't have time to tell you about, God led us into this box. And uh, missiologists 20 or 30 years ago just put a highlight on this so that we could direct our prayers into this region. It's known as the 1040 window. This region between 10 degrees and 40 degrees latitude stretching across North Africa, the Middle East, uh, Central and Southern Asia and Southeast Asia. And this is where the vast majority of unreached people groups are population-wise, if we were to look at the population. And so God led us uh, to go right. You see all the concentration in India, just above there in the Himalayas, God gave us a dot. And, you know, we, we were sharing this with the children in, in BCS Chapel one day. And afterwards, they came up to pray over us. And I just loved what one of the young little guys said. He was praying. He said, God, please help all of those red dots to turn to green. <laughs> he got it. You know, he got it. And that's a, that's a powerful prayer. So we went out saying, God, give us a nation. Give us an inheritance amongst this people group. Turn this people group from red to green. You know, that was our heart as we went out. Was it easy? No. It was, it was hard. You know, this region is unreached for a reason. <laughs> Most of these countries are very difficult. Most of them are restricted access nations. That means you can't go in and say, hey, I'd like a missionary visa. You can't go in and preach on a street corner. There's a lot of persecution uh, of people that come to faith. Often there's war zones. These are some of the poorest of the poor areas in the entire world. So there's a whole host of challenges, but God. We used to call them closed nations. 
We call them creative access nations. <laughs> God gave us strategies. We, we went in first as students to learn the language. And then we set up businesses. And God used the businesses we set up as just a holistic way to bless the city and interact. We wouldn't, initially we were going out doing lots of outreach, but later they'd be coming in to our businesses. Uh, we didn't even have to go. I mean, we still did, but, but they were coming in. We're getting to share with them right in the midst of our businesses. So God did so much. He opened so many doors and you know, we got out there and the spiritual darkness was real. And through that, God led us into the more of the Holy Spirit. God used this house. He used the teaching that came from this house. He used the worship that came out of this house. There was a season where we just felt like your songs were being written for us as we were out there reaching this red dot. And God did far more than we could ask, think, or imagine. It was the, the privilege of our lives to get to go into village after village, valley after valley. A lot of our people were, were nomads uh, living out on the mountains in tents and, and be able to share the truth of Jesus. And they had never heard. They, they could sense his love. And then God backed us up with power. We got to see people healed, set free. And God began to do such a work in that region that uh, the wrong people started hearing about it. <laughs> the, the authoritarian regime. And they didn't like it. They, they told us, you've been spreading the gospel over this entire region. And if we let you continue, there's going to be way too many believers. We've got to stop you. And in that moment, Holy Spirit said, they can stop you, but they can't stop me. The seeds are already in the ground. Well, I don't have time to tell you the whole story, but we're obviously here. We were, <laughs> we were banned. We were deemed a national security risk, a national security threat. <laughs> and, and that wasn't easy, to be honest. It's been quite a journey because this people are... Our, they're our inheritance. But in our role now, we get to still be involved there. And we get to run with an amazing group of world-changing Bethel missionaries all over the world. And we get to be a part of what God is doing here to send out laborers, both long-term and short-term. Do you know last year we sent out 2,000 people from Bethel on short-term missions? I mean, so God is on the move and we're just... We're so grateful to be where we are. So that's a little bit about our story. I want to, how many of you have heard of Hudson Taylor? Hudson Taylor, amazing pioneer mission, missionary in the 1800s that opened up China, the inland parts of China uh, to the gospel. He said this, he said, if I had a thousand lives to live, I'd give them all for China. And then he corrected himself. No, no not for China, for Christ. You know, you and I, we, we don't have a thousand lives to live, but, but we've got one life, don't we? And a guy that went out with Hudson to China, he was a, a wealthy and famous cricketer in England. His name was C.T. Studd. He left his wealth, gave it all to the Lord, to missions, and followed Hudson to, to China. Later, he pioneered in Africa. He said these words. He said, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. That's what Chris was talking about earlier. Going after eternity. Going after laying up treasures in heaven and not on earth, right? And so we only have one life. But as I look around this room, as a body, we've got about a thousand lives right in this room. We've got a bunch of kids in kids' church right now. And this building is going to be filled three more times today. What if all of us jumped into this? What if, what if all of us really entered into our role in the Great Commission? You know, I believe that he's calling us to a greater measure of involvement with his dream of bringing unreached sons and daughters home. We've, this isn't new to us. We've been doing this for a lot of years. Again, missions is in our DNA. But I think he's calling us to do more. 
I believe he's igniting within our midst a fresh Moravian-like movement of flaming arrows stirred up here in this house of revival to launch out into the least reached and darkest places of the earth. And you know, it, it's going to take all of us. You know, as long as we think, well, this is just kind of reserved for, for special people like John and Cindy, we're never going to fulfill the, the Great Commission. All of us have a role in it. I believe God is, is stirring up worshipers who are going to fuel the fire of missions flames. I believe that he's raising up kingdom entrepreneurs, white collar, blue collar, IT engineers, medical professionals who aren't being asked just to give to missions. God's calling them to go, to go and set up businesses, to to give medical care, to, to help local movements of emerging Christians in these unreached places transform their economies. I believe God's raising up creatives who can cast vision. Man, thank you, creative team. What the resources that you put together today. And then I believe God is gonna show all of us that there are so many other support roles that are needed. For every couple like Joel and Lacey, they need probably 50 people here that are on their team. Praying, encouraging, supporting. So some of you, you, you've donated a week at your Airbnb so that when Joel and Lacey come to town, they can stay in it. Some of you have donated your car for a week. There's, there's so many ways that we can be involved. And if we all jump in, we're gonna see the Great Commission fulfilled. We're gonna get to see God do so much more. And then there's one role that we believe he's calling all of us into in a greater measure. I believe that he's calling us to carry his unreached sons and daughters on the breastplate of our hearts into the secret place and into the holy of holies. He's calling us to to lift up your voice and to pray. It's a good word, babe. It's a good word. I just want us to look together quickly at Matthew 9 verse 37 and 38. In this passage, it's recorded that Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. I just wanna give you a a quick backdrop into uh, the beginning of our school year this year. We were seeking the Lord last summer and just asking for a word, his word of direction as we moved into a new school year. And clearly he began to put on our hearts uh, just the need to go deeper in prayer. And as a team at Bethel Missions, we really were seeking the Lord together and again and again and again with our staff team, we just heard the Lord wooing us into deeper prayer. And we always like to choose a theme at the beginning of the year. And this year it's lift up your voice. And the Lord also gave us a scripture, Acts 2.8. And that also just is part of his vision for where we're going. So just like to read that for you. We have a, a slide. In, in Psalm 2.8, it says, Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. So in the context of this Psalm, it's God the Father speaking to Jesus, his son, right? So you might be thinking, well, that promise is specifically just to Jesus, but hang on. (laughs) Because when we put our faith in Jesus, we're hidden in him. So that promise is actually for us as well. And we get to ask for the nations. And we get to ask for the people groups from the ends of the earth. And we get to ask knowing that God delights to fulfill his promise. He wants to give them to us as our inheritance. So a couple months ago, we were reading together in Exodus. And it's the story of setting up the tabernacle and And in Exodus chapter 28, 
uh, God is actually giving instructions on how to create the high priestly garments. And over and over again in Exodus 28, the Lord tells Moses the reason that he wants to focus so much on the beauty and the glory of these garments is because Aaron's main role as high priest is to minister unto the Lord. He says this over and over, it's to minister unto the Lord. One of the distinguishing elements of the high priest garments was the breastplate. We have a little illustration for you to, to take it in. So uh, this breastplate, God actually called it the breastplate of judgment. There were 12 precious stones that were set onto this breastplate to represent each of the 12 tribes of Israel. In Exodus 28, 29, it says, So Aaron shall bear the names of the sons of Israel on the breastplate of judgment over his heart when he goes into the holy place as a memorial before the Lord continually. So clearly, the Lord wanted the high priest to carry those 12 tribes over his heart as he ministered to the Lord. So you remember the scripture that he gave us at the beginning of this uh, school year. It's Psalm 2.8. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. God is inviting us to ask for the nations. We've been talking about unreached people groups today. So you've already heard that there are still more than 7,000 unreached people groups on the planet today. We really believe like the Lord gave us this idea to choose 12 of these tribes and because 7,000 is a very big number. So we felt like this was a great idea. We choose 12 of the tribes and as a church body, together we press in to pray for these tribes this year. So it's similar to the picture of the high priest going before the Lord, he's ministering to the Lord and on his breast, he's carrying over his heart the tribes of Israel. So in that same vein, that's what we're asking each one of you to do this year is to carry over your heart these 12 tribes. So I know that you can't take in the detail here, but it's in the report. You can take a look at it. But I just wanted to put this up briefly so you can see these beautiful faces. These are the 12 tribes that we chose. Uh, it's very hard to choose 12 out of 7,000. We really prayed together as a staff team and with our incredible third years as well. Um, we prayed into this. We got input from some of our missionaries who work with Unreached, and we came up with this list. And I want you to know that each one of these people, each one of these tribes is connected to a flag you see in the sanctuary today. So that's, that's, who, that's who the flags are connected to, these 12. If you could please go to the next slide. So I want you just to see this map where it shows you specifically where uh, our 12 lost tribes are located, where they're living. So again, we just really would love to invite you to adopt at least one of these Unreached People Group tribes in prayer this year. You can use the bookmark, if you got that at the door, to pray over all 12 of them regularly. Uh, just remember that in these tribes, there are very few believers. And actually, in several of these 12, there are 0% believers. So um, we're just excited because there's the promise that he's inviting us in to ask for the nations. We know that God's going to give them as our inheritance. We know that things are going to shift as we press in to pray for these 12 tribes this year. So just last month, we already received an incredible testimony from one of these tribes uh, through one of our missionaries, Benji and Daniela Morph, and their three sons are some of our Bethel missionaries. There's their beautiful picture. So they lead discipleship trainings all around the world. And Benji was helping facilitate a training in Africa early last year. And one of the guys who was trained, he then went to Northern Sudan. He was reaching out to Muslim imams within the Hausa tribe. So the Hausa is one of these 12 tribes that we've chosen. 
I want you to also understand that an imam is a prayer leader for the Muslims, okay? And so this man who had been trained, he was reaching out to Muslim imams in the Hausa tribe. So one of the imams this man was building relationship with died. So this man went to his funeral. Now the imam had been dead for two days already. But this man who'd been trained, (laughs) he just kept remembering how he'd been taught to heal the sick and raise the dead. He also remembered that all authority in heaven and earth had been given to him by Jesus. (laughs) So he asked permission to pray over the dead Imam. And of course, there was a lot of anger. People got very upset with him. They said, no way, you're a Christian. We don't want your prayers here. You absolutely cannot pray for him. But then another Muslim man stood up and said, no, this man was actually a good friend to our Imam. We should let him pray because I think the Imam would want him to. So they actually allowed him to pray. This man stepped up to the open casket. He prayed and declared life into the imam's dead body and the imam suddenly woke up. Uh, So right away he started to shout almost in a panic. We've been wrong, we're all wrong. Everything we've taught is wrong. He said, it's only about Jesus. He said, he said it was only Jesus at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> it's all about Jesus. So as you can imagine, many people who were attending the dead Imam's funeral gave their hearts to Jesus. Yeah. And we've since heard from Benji that many in that region have heard what happened and they've also given their lives to Jesus. Isn't that awesome? Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. Well, I feel like, you know, we know, we all know this, that that God's heart for the house of people didn't begin just when we chose them a few months ago. Like that's a dream that's been in motion for a lot, probably all eternity, right? They're in God's heart. They're his, they're his unreached sons and daughters. But I feel like God's given us that testimony for us and for you to supercharge your prayers. Because when we pray, things happen. We also believe that God's gonna use us praying to launch people into these places and resources. And one of the other things why we chose these tribes is We know people who are in the region, so we may even be able to send some teams to some of these places, right? So we're leaning into that. Just a couple other practicals before you, before we wrap up. In this this thing of prayer, in the uh, Hebrews lobby and also on the South lobby, we have prayer cards for all of our long-term missionaries. And we just encourage you to go out, pray, ask the Holy Spirit to highlight one or two and, and take this home. Uh, put it in your Bible or on the fridge or, or around the kitchen table and, and pray for our missionaries. Uh, for our online church family or for all of you, you can also go to our website, Bethel.com forward slash missionaries. And all of our long-term missionaries have their own page there. You can click on that, connect with them, pray for them, donate directly to them uh, and get behind them. So we encourage you to do that before you leave today. Uh, We also have a special way for you to encounter these 12 tribes. Um, In in the East-West room, we have an Encounter the Nations gallery. Now, this is really cool. Our second year revival groups, each one of them researched one of these tribes, and they came up with an artistic uh, board in there. And one of the cool things is they, they leaned into the Lord to ask for prophetic words of destiny over each tribe. And I actually heard from one of our team members this morning, a a Punjabi lady or or someone that knew the Punjabi tribe came and she said, that describes them to a T. So we'd love for you just to go and encounter this. We haven't left your kids out of this either. We've actually, our teams have been in children's church today and kids church. They've been learning about about unreached people groups. Our creative, our, what's that? Our our creative arts uh, director, Francesco, has 
has drawn portraits of every tribe. And your kids have been able to take one or two of these portraits and color it today and get words over the tribe. But, but if they want the whole book, the whole coloring book with all 12 tribes, they need to take you to the encounter room, okay? So the encounter room's gonna be available after the service today. It'll be available before the service tonight, and then it'll be available next Sunday as well, morning and evening. So we encourage you to go in there. And lastly, there's a, a very special piece of art in there. It's a multi-layered piece of art that our creative arts team and our special anointed artist, Patrick, uh, painted. Thank you, Patrick. You don't even know what you're clapping for. But after, after you see this, you will. Now, now, to fully experience that, you need to go into uh, the Encounter the Nations gallery to fully experience. How many of you went to the augmented gallery before Christmas? Same idea, right? But to bring you into this, we want to show you the video form of this painting. And then we have the incredible privilege of hearing from Pastor Bill. So let's go ahead and, and look to the screen. The Lord watches over all his works. God rejoices over what he has made because all of creation points to the grandeur and majesty of his glory. Father, we thank you for what you have in your heart and mind for the nations. As we give you our lives and gifts, use us, Lord. The light of your splendor will touch every corner of the earth by your precious Holy Spirit. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all people. Because of the depth of God's love and compassion towards his creation, he made a way out of darkness that he would send a savior to die for his people. Our redemption has been secured by the shed blood of our precious Lord Jesus. In the beginning was the word, and we are saved by his word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Still today, over one-third of the world has never heard the gospel. Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray, therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers. Lift up your voice and pray. To the people who have never heard, we are the hands and feet of Christ. We are the people who will carry his heart and his testimony. And as I looked, I beheld a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, tribe, and tongue, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. And they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. In my Father's house are many mansions. Through the windows of his eyes, he sees every tribe. His eyes are ever upon them. Therefore, lift up your voice and pray. So good, so good. We're so blessed to have Jonathan and Cindy as part of our part of our house. Bless them. These guys are amazing. <clears throat> they they know what it is to really lay their life down and go into tough places. So we're we're just so privileged. Thanks, thanks for what you're putting together for us. Um, I've got just a few minutes left and and uh, got a couple thoughts to uh, to share with you. Um, Open your Bibles, if you would, to Matthew 28, even if you can quote the passage, look at it anyway, and uh, Matthew 28, and then Acts chapter 1. So we're going to look at two portions of Scripture, and I'm going to read, uh, while you're turning uh, in your Bibles, I'm going to read um, a favorite uh, psalm of mine. Psalm 22 is considered the mess a messianic uh, psalm, it's about the death of Christ, and it ends with <clears throat> these words. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. That's an extraordinary statement. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before you. 
For the kingdom is the Lord's and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth shall eat and worship. And it goes on. Promises like this are not simply to be read and uh, applauded. They're to be, they're invitations. You know, they're invitations. They can either stay there on the page or they can become an active part of our prayer life. Uh, something, uh, one, of the, one of the most amazing, uh, here's the hard part of praying for nations and praying for uh, unreached people groups, etc. is you don't get daily feedback to keep you encouraged. You have to do it because of the call of God and who you are in Christ. If you need the constant daily motivation, you know, praying for the sick is easy because you see breakthroughs, it keeps you motivated. But, uh, but on, this, on the bigger scale, you have to be motivated out of an identity issue, a call of God. And uh, missions groups, uh, a number of years ago, I don't remember now, I've, I've heard before, but I, I think it's like back in the 80s, maybe 70s, but certain missions groups around the world started targeting what's called the 1040 window. It's a, it's a, uh, we saw the map earlier. The 1040 window is a, a, a geographical section of planet Earth where a large part of the unreached people groups live, as you saw on, on, the, on the map. But what happened is prayer ministry groups started targeting, they started realizing that's where the, most of the people are, so we need to pray for them. So if you can imagine now 10, 20, 30 years later of these groups constantly praying into that, we have story upon story upon story of, of people who live in that area who have never heard the gospel. They have a man in white show up in their dreams. They'll have a, a vision, they'll have an encounter with what they call the man in white. And it has become so common, um, it's not to replace the going because they still have to hear the gospel, but they have these encounters uh, with the man in white. It's become so common that I know of a guy who goes in front of a mosque and he just stands there. And when people come in, he says, have you seen the man in white? If they say yes, he said, stand over here and I'll tell you who he is. And then if they, if they haven't seen the man in white, they actually, they, he, they just go into the mosque. So after everybody showed up and they got a pile of folks here that have seen the man in white, he then goes over and shares the gospel, tells them who, who the man in white is. It's, it's amazing. But how does that happen? The, the atmosphere over these parts of the world are shifting because of long-term prayer, long-term prayer. It's not just the, you know, the, the, the casual prayer on a mission Sunday, which is important, but it's, it's the long-term focus to say, you know what, we want him to get his full reward. We want Psalms 22 verse 27 that I read to you moments ago to be fulfilled where all the families of the earth bow before him, where all the nations, all the ethnos, all the people groups of the earth, not just uh, the 200 nations that exist, all the different people groups. And so this is who we are as a church family. Um, here, let's read these two passages and then I'll try to, uh, I'll, I'll do, I'll do more next week uh, and, uh, hopefully it'll make more sense then, but let me plant the seeds for it right now. In Matthew 28, we have what we refer to as the great commission it starts in verse 18. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore, make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them, them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And I remind you, he commanded them, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils. It was never supposed to end. <clears throat> Is this mic on? <laughs> It was never supposed to end. It was never supposed to end. It's a part of the gospel. He said this gospel will be preached all nations, not 200 nations, but the ethnos, the people groups. And when the gospel of the kingdom is preached in the gospels, it's followed with miracle signs and wonders. So the prophecy that this gospel will be preached in all the world and then the end shall come is a gospel that is demonstrated with power. It's a gospel that illustrates the resurrection of Jesus. <clears throat> Teaching then to observe all that I have commanded you and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I love that last phrase. One preacher said, he don't fly for that reason. Because Jesus said, lo, I'm with you always. It's, it's, <laughs> That's, that's a corny joke, but it wasn't mine. I'm just, I'm just the messenger. Acts chapter uh, 1, 
Acts chapter 1, verse uh, 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, to the end of the earth. All right, so here's the deal. We are required to walk in authority and power. It's what Jesus did, it's what he illustrated. He commissioned his disciples. Luke chapter 1, verse 9, he gave them authority and power. But then when he ascended to heaven, they had to get their own. They were under his deputized anointing, if you will. And so uh, in Matthew 28, he shows up and he announces all authority has been given to me. He passes that authority on. And it is in everybody's life in this room, in the measure we've said yes to his mission. Authority comes in the commission, but power comes in the encounter. Authority comes in the commission, power comes in the encounter. And so Jesus received power when the Spirit of God came upon him at his water baptism. Very next chapter, we see him functioning in miracle signs and wonders. There's a connection there. Matthew 28, all authority has been given to me. Go therefore. Luke's version adds this part. Don't leave Jerusalem till you're clothed with power. Luke wrote Luke. Go figure. And Acts. Put the two together. You see a seamless story. Here's my point. Authority and power are both essential to living and demonstrating the gospel. But in the two champion verses that deal with these subjects, they are both tied to our influence on the nations. Matthew 28, disciple nations because of authority. Acts chapter one, you'll receive power, be witnesses in all the earth, all the nations. The whole point is authority and power is what qualifies us to influence nations. And the the bottom line is, and I'll I'll, I'll tell you more personal stuff uh, probably next week, but the the missions thing has been a huge part of my life. As long as I can remember, I was, I was, you know, weaned on it, so to speak. And so we, we just, we always had missionaries in our home. It was always a huge part of our life. It's just Benny and I, we, we gave pretty extreme before we even married. And we brought the two uh, t- together, the commit, commitment to world missions. It's who we are. And, and it's, it's, it's not optional. You know, how we do it is different. You, 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 everyone can pray. Most everyone can send. That's giving. And some get to go. Well, actually, everybody gets to go because this is a nation that needs discipling. (laughs) So when when we dismiss you in a couple of minutes, you're going to go into all the world and preach the gospel of the kingdom. But this this is who we are. And recognizing that it is actually in our DNA, that he wrote in in his word the promises where entire nations, people groups would be brought to him, that is that is coursing through his own veins. That's his own prayer life, if you will, is to intercede and to pray for us and to pray for the nations. That's our privilege. So what I'm hoping that all of us get to do is up our, upgrade our, first of all, our sense of identity and responsibility for nations. You know, maybe the Lord highlights a nation to you or a missionary or both. And then just on a regular basis throughout the week, you just start praying. Maybe you pick up a newspaper. Ooh, but you pick up a newspaper. <laughs> you, sorry. I manifested for a moment. I, I think I'm okay now. And, and you see an article about that nation that gives you insight on how to pray. It's, it's, it's a very significant thing. So, all right, go ahead and stand. Yes, Lord. You know, um, we're, we're gonna. I'm gonna close in prayer here in just a second. So hold on, if you wouldn't mind. <clears throat> but you know, the, the the big deal is that there there obviously could be people in this room right now that have have never have never given your life to Christ, have never received His forgiveness, don't know what it is to be. Bible calls it born again. It's where you change from the inside out. And if there's anybody in this room, before we pray for us as a, a, 
a crowd of missionaries. Um, I, I want to give this opportunity. If there's anyone here that would just say, Bill, I don't want to leave the room. I don't want to leave the property until I know what it is to know God, to be forgiven, to be adopted into his family. If there's anyone in that place, just quickly put your hand up right now. And just by doing that, you're saying, Bill, I don't want to leave until I know I have found peace with God, what it is to be forgiven. Do so real quickly. And I'll wait just, just a moment. I just want to make sure everyone has the opportunity for this. We also have so many people online uh, that have been healed this week. The Randy Clark Conference was outrageously wonderful. And so many people got healed online. And, and it, it may be that some of you uh, who are online would say, I, I don't know Jesus and I want to. Just write in the, in the chat box and there'll be a pastor there to help you. All right, let's just pray. Father, I ask that you would impart a grace for missions. Um, even those who have never even given it a second thought, that you would just teach us what you think and that you would help us in this, this radical adjustment for this hour to embrace the nations coming to Christ and to celebrate everything we hear. We honor you for the testimonies today. Wow, 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 wow. Resurrections. Amazing. We honor you for it. Everybody said, amen. I'll hold you a spot there. Tom will come and finish. So good. Can we just give John Cindy just a big hand? Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome. What a great word, Bill. Thank you. So good. Listen, before anybody moves, I want to do a couple things right now. First, if you're in this room and you feel your heart is stirred, because you want to respond and say, I will go to the nations. And you feel like your heart is stirred. You don't know what it's going to look like yet, but you feel the fire of God on you. I want you to get out of your chair, come down here and kneel, and just surrender right now. Just go. Just, 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 just do it now. Just come. Just come and surrender now. Now, just go. Mar Bill said something that reminded me of what Mario Marillo said one time, that if you want more of God, just say yes before he pours it out. And the more is coming. Amen. Praise God. Everybody else. Most people I talk to on the streets about the gospel, when I ask one simple question, have you ever heard of what it means to be born again? Most of them say, no. Right here in America. I was in Wichita, Kansas. Good old heartbeat of America a while ago. Or a year ago. And uh, I met a teenager, just a normal American kid, and I just began to just share the gospel with him. I shared my testimony. Jesus Christ died. He was a living person. He was God in the flesh. He died. He rose again, defeating death, hell, and the grave. I said, have you ever heard that? And he goes, I've never heard that before in my life. Never heard the gospel. So right, right here in our Judea, there are unreached Americans all over the place who are being raised in homes that have never gone to church once. And so rather than being a missions movement that like a fountain, you just, it shoots up all around the world and the grass around it dies. Let's be like a flood and just spread. And as we go, the gospel is going to go out and begin to touch everybody that we come in contact with. So I believe there's about to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit right here on the whole body and online as well in the, green, in the great room. Put your hand on the person next to you and I want you to just pray for more of the fire of God before we go here today. We're almost done, but pray for more of the fire of God. More, more. God, we ask you to give us your heart for the nations. I pray, Father, give us tears for the lost again, God. Break our hearts for what breaks your heart, God. More God. More God. More. More. I feel like some of us right now, our lives are being re rearranged as we talked about eternity. We're just trying to think about business deals later, which is all good. God's in that stuff. But right now there's a surrender that's happening. The fire of God falls on sacrifice. It falls on surrender. So just say yes, just yes, God. We ask you to give us America, God, for the gospel. Give us Mexico, give us the nations of the world. Let the fire of God, the fire of God, 
If you feel the, something on your body, you feel the fire, you feel something burning on you, just wave your hands in the air right now. Just wave it in the air right now. Let the fire of God just right now, just receive it more, more in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thanks, God. Online right now, online, you're watching this in your car. Thank you, God. Somebody in Nebraska is watching this right now. The fire of God is just falling in your car right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Let the fire of God come. More, more, more. All right. I don't know how to do this, but we've got a whole bunch of other people coming here in just a minute. We've got students. We've got people, prayer team, they're going to come up. And uh, prayer team, why don't you just kind of line up behind these guys? And if you need a miracle, you need prayer for something, we're going to be here to pray for you. No rush here. Just continue to just surrender to the Lord. God, let your heart just come. Bless you guys. Hey, don't forget tonight's baptism Sunday. If you have not been baptized yet or you had a long season where you walked away from God and you're back with the Lord and it's time to bury the past, five o'clock in the dining room, I'm gonna be doing it. It's gonna be awesome. We'll see you tonight. Wow, wow, wow. What a powerful service. And God is moving powerfully in the room here. And I know He's moving powerfully with you where you are at home. Uh, we actually wanted to take a moment just to continue to minister. So if you want to respond to the call that Tom gave, that Bill, John and Cindy of just saying yes to the nations, that uh, you've been asking the Lord for nations or you feel stirred to ask the Lord for nations. Um, I just had this picture of different people just uh, surrendering to the Lord, whether it's opening your hands, whether you want to kneel in your living room, if you're driving your car, just to surrender in your heart. But God, I thank you for the fire of God coming and t touching and commissioning people. I believe there is a commissioning. And I, I believe specifically there's a number of you that felt called to the nations in your youth and um, life happened and things, you know, good things happened along the way. Um, you felt like you missed your calling. I don't know who I'm speaking to right now, but you feel like you missed your calling. And I felt the Lord say, I am recommissioning you. You haven't missed anything, that your greatest years are ahead. And I believe there's a recalling onto the missions field or um, a, a fresh surrender for those of you that felt that call to missions in your youth. And so if that's you, go ahead and put it in the chat. I want to pray and believe with you as well. But God is moving. Come on. And Amanda, we just saw that Abigail, after we prayed for RSV, is better. So Jesus, wow. thank you, Jesus, thank for what you're Jesus. doing right now. Thank but um, you. I just, I, uh, when Bill was talking about the authority and power, I just felt an invitation of that there was just going to be a release of power and just an increase on you even right now. And so I, I just, I had this picture of many of you just opening up your hands just like this. And I'm going to pray. And I feel like many of you, you're going to sense a, a fire come on your hands. You're going to uh, sense a warmth, uh, maybe even uh, almost like a numbing, timbing sensation, almost like a waiting sensation. Some of you are just going to feel the pressure of God, some, uh, the, like the weight of God. Some of you are going to feel just the peace and almost like a breeze come over you right now. But Holy Spirit, we just thank you that we wouldn't just be a people with good theology and sound doctrine, but we'd be a people marked by power. And Holy Spirit, right now, we just thank you just for an impartation of power, a demonstration of power to come on them right now. Father, we thank you for a, just a release of gifting, of miracles, and of resurrecting power right now in Jesus' name. And just as John and Cindy shared of that Iman being raised from the dead, Father, we thank you for resurrection life and power coming on our online community right there, that there would just be a demonstration of power in their life in every area. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. We see a number of you saying, that's me. Um, Ken and Diane recalling that they haven't missed it. Amanda, we saw that for you. I, Amanda, I just feel like it's your day. And I know that you actually uh, attend Bethel in person quite often, but I feel the Lord is like, today is a divine setup for you and your husband. Um, I believe I'm supposed to prophesy over your year. This is a year of divine blessing. And I, I felt like there was a desire. You, you said that you, you both have a desire to go to missions, but I felt like there was a... Um, almost a plan to go and the finances never came through in the past. Come on. 
and I felt to prophesy over your year financial provision. And I saw a desire in your heart to have a home that you rented out. There was a stream of income and there was a desire to go to the nations as a result of this. I'm taking some risks here, but uh, I believe that the Lord uh, is said to prophesy that 2024 is your year. Um, and there was going to be just this radical blessing that came because of your heart to go. And so I bless you. I bless your family. The Lord is on your family. A number of you, I also saw you say, my mission's is at home. My mission feels at home. And it's so true. The Lord calls us to different places and positions us in places where we have authority for that territory. And so we bless you guys with that too. At the beginning, you met the wonderful Nicole. Yes. who leads our translations team. And we have a treat for you because we have two more of our amazing re regional connection pastors here. Um, and so we're going to invite up, first of all, Camilla. Camilla, could you come up on up? Camilla is our regional connection pastor for our Russian-speaking community. And so we'd love for her to just to, she's our powerhouse. So we'd love for you just to share and pray over us. Yes. Hello. So good to be here. And honestly, I'm just so fired up because I've been listening to the tailors and I was like, actually two of the groups that the, he has mentioned, they actually, part of them, most, most of the part of them speak Russian language, which is crazy because uh, those, uh, you know, sometimes we think about the language and think, oh, Russian means only Russia, but actually it includes more than 200 nations inside, like nation groups. And so uh, for me, it's like, uh, all the post-CIS countries, they speak Russian as well, which includes all the Central Asia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and other uh, countries. And so I am like, I'm like, God, thank you for what you're doing through this house, through Bethel. And just really, it's such a door to influence those groups. So I'm going to pray that. Um, I'm actually seeing a picture of how we are, as uh, as an English-speaking group, influence, their, uh, influence those countries. But I'm actually seeing how the fruit of it comes back to America and how comes back to all the people who sown. And uh, I, I, I just, I'm just going to pray the even like the payback the payback from those unreached group that God is going to just multiply everything that you've sown into them and increase your own power of the Holy Spirit inside of you. So, uh, so I'm going to pray in Russian. Дух Святой, спасибо тебе за каждого человека, который здесь есть. Во имя Иисуса Христа мы сейчас благословляем просто каждого слушателя и высвобождаем силу. Я молюсь за каждую группу людей, которая не достигнута, особенно за русскоязычную аудиторию, за каждую человека во имя Иисуса Христа. И я молюсь, что столько, сколько англоязычная аудитория посеяла в русскоязычный мир, что они пожнут во сто крат также во имя Иисуса. И я благословляю каждого, у кого есть сейчас в сердце горит идти и достигать нации. И мы высвобождаем наследие на вас во имя Иисуса. Аминь. Yes. And wow, so powerful, Camilla. Thank you. We so appreciate you and all that you do. And then we're going to wel welcome up the amazing Manlu. Manlu is our regional connection pastor for our Mandarin speaking people. Again, an absolute powerhouse. And we'd love for you just to share and pray over our, our, our yeah, community. First of all, I want to say thank you for everyone that has been loving Chinese people. I'm here because all of your prayers and all of the investment for years pour into. Uh, Asian, foreign to Chinese speaking people. And we're so, so grateful. We have this opportunity to listen, to receive the love of God. And we are so like a poured to love in our lives. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and we just, we're ready to grow into the identity we are, who we are. And we're ready to just, just invest our life to share the gospel and to, to just extend kingdom. So I want to pray in Chinese, like, 天父,谢谢你, 耶稣,谢谢你给我们的恩典, 给我们的恩惠, 给我们的恩宠, 我们真的是已经准备好了, 而且我们的生命深深地被你浇灌了, 我看到所有的在全球的这些华人, 你们的生命被福音, 被神的光深深地点燃了, 你们当下在你们的生活中, 在你们所在的地方, 完全地被圣灵充满, 我祝福你们, 出到你的门的时候, 你们带着福音的大能, 带着圣灵的恩高, 带着神的爱, 触摸每一个你们, 正遇到的人, 我们中国人, 我们华人, 我们带着这样的恩惠, 
所有的我们将触摸的人，主，我们谢谢你，我们长成我们华人的样式，我们在这样的国度中，我们把我们的一份子摆上，愿你用我们这五饼二鱼的小小的能力，我们每个人身上小小的能力，深深的扩张你的国度。我奉耶稣的名祷告， Amen。Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Man Lu. And I, I want to say this, it's such a privilege and honor that we are part of this global community and you guys are the hands and feet of Jesus. And so we want to charge you, challenge you to take a risk this week, that, to ask the Lord for authority in the area that you're in and take a risk to share the gospel with somebody, to let somebody know that Jesus loves them, to offer to pray. And uh, we are Count it as an honor and a privilege that we are a part of a global family. Yeah. That all over the world we're seeing God move, and we are just are so thankful for you. We're thankful for your yes, and we pray that this will be a, a week where you take risks, and we can't wait to hear what happens. Yeah, and just want to encourage you just to check out if you're interested more in what we're doing overseas and reaching the nations. Just go to Bethel.com/missions. Also, that video that was released during service, they're going to be eventually posting that up under the missions area there as well. And so, just want to encourage you just to continue partner with us in prayer to see the nations come under the discipleship and lordship of Jesus Christ. And so, we love you guys. We are so thankful for you, and we're just declaring breakthrough and grace over you. If any of you are needing a miracle. In your body, or believing for a financial miracle right now, Father, we just release healing in Jesus' name. We command all pain to go, Father. We release breakthrough in finances and provision, and Father, we just even thank you that this is a year of breakthrough. It's a breakthrough, a year of breakthrough over their health, over their family, over their life, and in their communities right now. And Father, we just declare right now an overwhelming grace right now to see the nations transformed and encounter your goodness and your grace in Jesus' name. Bless you guys, and see you tonight too for our evening service. Bless, Bless you, guys. you guys. Your hands and sing it again. We. 